up, everybody? We're going to jump right into this video. But before we uh, get into some of the stuff we're going to do today, I'm going to sit in this chair and I'm going to explain some stuff about my previous video I had put out. Uh, if you haven't seen that, go check it out. But pretty much what had happened is I was on my way to Diesel's and Donuts um, with Dirty Max Jack, uh, who I had put on the event. I was headed there and I had noticed a vibration um, in my truck at about 65 miles an hour and 70, but it really, it was fine until I really hit 65 miles an hour is when I noticed it really bad. So let's knock that out first. Um, I did a couple things. Uh, I, uh, I had replaced the carrier bearing um, for the drive shaft. My truck has a one piece drive shaft. So it's the long drive shaft instead of being broken up into two chunks. Um, so uh, in the right before, or like right where it connects to the uh, little stubby intermediate shaft, uh, there was uh, a carrier bearing that attaches up to the uh, bottom of the truck. That was very loose, so I replaced that, thinking that that was the issue. Uh, however, uh, the truck still at 65 miles an hour uh, would give me a little shake. So what I ended up doing is I crawled back under the truck. I was pretty sure it was driveline related uh, because it just, it felt like it was coming from the back. <coughs> Excuse me. Felt like it was coming from the back and it also would kind of shake the transmission. Um, and I knew the transmission was solid and there was nothing wrong with it. The shifts were fine, stuff like that. So uh, I got underneath, started checking U-joints and uh, everything looked fine. I had not taken the drive shaft off and wiggled it around uh, just to make sure there wasn't any binding. But I was pretty sure it wasn't binding because uh, I just I didn't think that was the issue. Anyways, uh, I started looking around a little bit more and I finally got back under the truck and I looked at the U-joint that connects to the axle, the rear differential. And what I noticed was this was a tiny bit too small when it was connected, uh, the, the fitting that connected uh, to the differential. There was a little bit of slop um, side to side. So let's say you've got these clips and this is supposed to stick right in, nice tight fit so it can't wobble uh, back and forth like this. Well, there was about a sixteenth of an inch of play. So what happens is this actually comes out, sixteenth of an inch let's say. But what happens is now that this pin, these, these clips are out a little bit, then this center joint can slide a sixteenth of an inch as it rotates back and forth. So what was happening is this U joint was popping back and forth, causing the vibration. Uh, it would cause the axle, I mean the drive shaft, to not be centered with the differential. And anyway, that little movement side to side, even though it was so minute and very small, was causing that to happen. So I shopped around for a bigger size U joint, and I could not find a U joint bigger. This was the biggest size U joint they make. So I'm really, I'm still at a loss as far as what U joint to use. Um, so. That is kind of where we are at. The, the U joint was too small and there was enough for a little bit of play. What I ended up doing is, because there was a little bit of play though, I found that all the way to one side was, let's say you got these clips like this, and I moved it this way, and it would make the drive shaft a little off center to uh, the actual yoke that it connects to. However, one of the directions, if you pushed it all the way, the clip centered it completely. So that means that uh, all I had to do was I stuck a sixteenth of an inch spacer on this side, on the clip, and Voila, I uh, centered it perfectly and it drives like a dream. Also, uh, I didn't realize how much of an issue at lower speeds when you first take off and, and during shift points, um, how much smoother the shift points are now that this is properly aligned and uh, tightened down and it's not wobbling back and forth. So, it, I don't, it was a combination. I think with that play, it wore out the U joint, the grease inside when I pulled the U joint out. Super, super smelly and burnt. Um, so, it was definitely, you know, burning and uh, causing issues, but. Uh, that is what I had to do to fix that issue, but I am very happy to be able to tell you guys that the wobble uh, was not transmission related or engine related. It was just the drive shaft uh, U joint. So that is kind of that's kind of like where we're at with that. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Now that brings us to the next update for the channel. And I know I've been telling you guys a lot lately. You know, I've, I've hesitated to tear into it until I have a buyer for the transmission and engine. I'm very excited to let you know that I have officially sold the transmission and engine out of that Jeep. So here in the next couple days, it's a Monday today. I am supposed to be uh, selling well he's coming to pick it up 
Uh, he already bought it, but he's coming to pick it up uh, this Saturday. So I just need to have the engine and trans out by Saturday, pull the Jeep in and start taking off uh, fenders, take off the winch, take off the, uh, you know, just start taking the stuff off of the front and then literally I should be able to pull pull the engine and trans right out without any issues at all. So that's kind of where we're at with that. Um, and we're going to get started on that right away. What we have just gotten in the mail is this oil feed line for the uh, P-Pump. So what it does is... I got this off of eBay they sell a specific kit just for this application uh, you have to have a oil restrictor um, and so I have put this hose in here back in here tapped it into the block um, there's these little spots where you can take out a plug anyways i have put this oil line here and i need to take this out right here i don't know if you can see that but I need to take that out right here and then this will screw in there and it's got the copper washer and then what we'll do is we will uh, put this onto there hopefully um, and hopefully we won't have any issues. Last we were working on this piece of junk, uh, I was trying to figure out the oil feed line issue. I had ordered this off of uh, eBay this line oil feed line which was fine but two ends this is a dash four and this one is just like two millimeters bigger than a dash four so you can see like if you try to slide it on oh yeah it just slides on now it was not supposed to be like that like it did not say anything about that in the uh, eBay listing so this was like 20 bucks um, I don't typically like ship stuff back but I'm gonna see about getting a refund uh, it wasn't what they had said it was so we'll see I don't know but I did run back out shout out to my shop local shop a1 customs i know i've mentioned them before but they hooked me up with a line uh, so should be good to go and this one uh, is actually more of what i was looking for it's got a straight end on this one end and then we've got the uh, 90 degree on this one so it works out just fine and I paid about the same amount of money. I paid 26 bucks for this, and that was like 20 bucks. So um, that's about right, six dollars for a fitting. But this is a much higher quality than that one is. Um, just as reference, over here, this spins. So. I don't know if that would leak or not, but it shouldn't spin like that, I don't think. So, anyways, uh, let's go ahead right in and I'm gonna install this. First order of business was getting the 
big old winch off. We got it off. And the next order of business, I guess, is going to be draining the fluids, uh, the uh, coolant. We're gonna need to literally just start taking this stuff all apart. Already unhooked the battery. So, I mean, taking uh, intakes off like just everything has got to come out so we are just gonna get started right away um, and it looks like all this stuff we are gonna try to take out um, I'm not a hundred percent sure how all this stuff comes out but uh, we will figure it out looks like there may be some screws um, to get this uh, grill off but that is what we're gonna start with ladies and gents the teardown of the Jeep has officially started and hopefully we make some good progress. Uh, I don't know how far we'll get in this particular video because it is, if I remember correctly, starting to get kind of long. But yeah, we are, we're getting, uh, we're, we're making progress now. So now uh, the next time this Jeep is driving and running, will be with this beast of a power plant. And that is something to very much so look forward to. And so I'm gonna get started on tearing this down and uh, you guys will see it when it's done. Okay guys, uh, it's been a couple minutes, about probably 30 minutes, 20 minutes, somewhere in there. Um, this is the point at which we are at. Uh, I've got this front grill piece pretty much all off. It's kind of nice, it comes out as one section uh, and the fenders, you unscrew them through the bottom. So uh, the only thing that I need to do right now is take one of these, uh, take the other line off of this AC uh, unit here uh, and then the center piece should be able to pop right out I already disconnected the wiring harness for all that <laughs> One of the reasons we're so close first of all we are so close now uh, but one of the reasons why working on this Jeep is gonna be such a piece of cake is because look at this that's the whole front grill all I got to do is pop these fenders off boom bada boom and then pretty much I'll have access you know all the way around this engine and mocking up is gonna be super easy. Uh, and like once I get this engine out and then I get the transmission, that's the next thing I am waiting on, uh, picking up a transmission. But I'm selling this engine and I'm gonna sell a few other miscellaneous parts um, and hopefully have somewhat close to enough money um, to put that straight into the transmission. Um, I'm selling the engine and trans for a thousand dollars. So that's a thousand dollars that can go towards the new trans. Uh, and 
then I've got some other parts. I'm not, like I can sell the radiator separately. It's pretty much brand new. Um, anyways, so that can be sold. Uh, a few other things like this Canon air filter might catch a couple bucks for that uh, stuff like that so that is where we're at um, I'm gonna piddle a little more on this maybe get the radiator off um, but other than that guys I think this is probably a good stopping place on the Jeep but yeah I <laughs> The, the Jeep is officially coming apart. Uh, and man, it is exciting, exciting, exciting. Uh, very excited. And oh, I may be selling the winch too. Uh, if anyone watching this is interested in buying a winch, let me know. Uh, I think the winch is, I'm going to sell as well. But. Whew. all right guys uh i'm gonna call it a day for this video thank you guys for watching and in the next video we should be pulling the whole uh we should be pulling the whole transmission and engine out so in the next video that will be coming out and um we will be very 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 close to mocking up the new one so with that give this video a like aka thumbs up and go ahead and subscribe if you're not and if you don't want to subscribe subscribe then don't but make sure you watch the videos anyways and <laughs> i will get you guys in the next upload i am out